We all are familiar with the story of David and Goliath. To this day is one of my favorite stories in, in the Word of God. And here we find David. He is approaching the battle. David hears the great challenge from the giant Goliath, and he gets stirred up in his spirit. And no one else has accepted that challenge. The people of Israel are intimidated. But David is stirred up in his spirit when he hears the blasphemies of Goliath against the great nation of Israel and against the God of Israel. And so David is now about to accept the challenge. And as David is about to accept this challenge, his older brother Eliab steps in and says this in 1 Samuel chapter number 17, verse number 28, and then we'll read verse 29. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men, and Eliab's anger was kindled against David. And he said, Why camest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left? Those few sheep in the wilderness, I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart. For thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. And David said, what have I now done? Is there not a cause? So basically, David's older brother is accu accusing him. Eliab is accusing David of having an unpure motive. And he's accusing him of pride. But. We know the story. We know that the truth of the matter is David was not doing what he was doing. He was not accepting this challenge uh, out of pride. He was accepting this challenge out of a pure jealousy for his God and out of patriotism for his people, the great nation of Israel. David's heart and motives, his motives are pure. His, his heart is, is pure. And he simply uh, wants to wants to accept this challenge so that all may know who the true God of it uh, 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 is. Because uh, the Goliath, the giant Goliath, he has challenged the God of Israel. Okay, there's a lot at stake here. And David, he sees the need. Someone needs to accept this challenge so that the whole world may see that our God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is the one and only true God. And he will give us the victory if someone will courageously step up and accept the challenge and show people just how powerful our God is. That's David's heart and motive. But here comes Eliab accusing him of pride. And you know, the truth of the matter is, cowards will always accuse the courageous of pride. Uh, because cowards are intimidated by those who are courageous. Because of a bad conscience, it, it makes them look bad. It makes them feel bad because they know in their heart, man, if anyone should have been accepting the challenge, it was Eliab. He was a soldier. David wasn't a soldier. David was a shepherd boy. David wasn't even old enough to be in the armies of Israel. According to the law of Moses, you had to be at least 20 years old. So David, he was most likely in his teen years when this took place. And David, we know David's motives are pure because he didn't go looking for a fight. I mean, David didn't go looking for a fight. The fight came to him. David didn't go looking for a fight. David was simply being obedient to the instructions of his father. His father said, look, I want you to take this food to your brethren that are fighting in the battle, and I want you to go check up on them and see how they're doing. And that's how David was introduced to this situation that we read about here in 1 Samuel chapter 17, the challenge of Goliath. So the point of this little devotional is this, my brother, no matter what you do in the work of the Lord, when you set out to serve God, there's always going to be critics. And, and that's unavoidable, my brethren. But what I like from the example of David here, you never see David really spending much time to defend himself. You know what David does? Instead of getting all bent out of shape, instead of getting downhearted and discouraged by, uh, by the, the bad criticism and the false accusation of his older brother, you know what David did? He stayed focused on the battle. 
He stayed focused on the challenge. He said, is there not a cause? There's a great cause here. Our God has been challenged and someone needs to accept that challenge and show that giant. Someone needs to shut his mouth up and, and show the world who the true God of Israel really is. So my brother, listen, when the, when the accusations come, when the bad criticism come, when opposition comes, don't get distracted. You just stay focused on the task at hand. You stay focused on the bigger picture. Let's let this world know that our God is the one and only true God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's the, that's the greater cause. Instead of defending ourselves and getting offended and bent out of shape, because of all the criticism and, and, and what everyone else says. Listen, I learned a long time ago, I can't help what everyone else says or thinks about me, about our ministry, about what we do for the Lord. Listen, the Lord knows my heart. And if you're pure and sincere in your motives and desires, the Lord knows your heart as well. So you know what? That ought to be good enough. Let everyone else say and think what they want to say and think. L listen, David's works spoke for themselves. And at the end of the day, God was glorified. And so you just stay focused. Don't get distracted. Just stay focused. Is there not a cause? There is. Let's stay focused on the greater cause of glorifying God and letting this world know that our God is the true God. God bless you.